This is the Washu Club in Virginia City, Nevada. I'm just going to hit some of the highlights. Um, it all started in Nevada's Comstock Load. A great social institution was spawned by mining magnets, artists, and men of letters who sought to hobnob in luxury. The Washu Club gained a reputation throughout the Pacific Coast for luxurious accommodations, and at one time, it was a household item. Soon after the Bonanza, dividends surged from $3 per share in January of 1875 to $10 per share within less than two months. An organizational meeting of the club held on February 20th proved to be a prelude to a parade of notables that would come through the club's exclusive quarters and which housed one of the finest libraries east of San Francisco, an elegant billiard room, a parlor adorned with Italian marble and bronze statuettes, and a wine room that boasted an elaborately carved black walnut sideboard. The club's membership roster read like a who's who of Comstock and Pacific Coast history, and the pages of the club's guest register were emblazoned with the signatures of people like General Ulysses S. Grant, General Robert Sherman, actor and lecturer Artemis Ward, actor Edwin Booth, and railroad magnate Darius Ogden Mills, and 50 other millionaires or international, of international reputation. Uh, let's go on here. Among the 60, 60 charter members were the Bank of California officers. Um, there was a number of those, San Francisco, um, Daggett, Charles Foreman, um, Chief Justices, uh, all kinds of people, the Virginia and Truckee Railroad officers, just all kinds of people. Um, within two months, the club had purchased the Reynolds Building at 8th and 10th, 10th B Street and promptly began renovating the structure to the organization's luxurious requirements. And that's what the Enterprise reported on April 22nd of 1875. Um, they made all kinds of modifications. The wine room was 14 by 17 feet. Um, the sideboard was built. Um, the parlor is 19 by 24. The second was 24 by 27 feet. Um, the billiard room was 24 by 31 feet. Um, old windows were removed and replaced with two pane of French plate glass. Carpets and furniture put in. Quality superior um, was just, everything was the best. Purest marble. Um, it was really a fantastic place. Um, rooms are easy and elegant. The lower hall is ample and well lighted towards the western um, portion of the building. Uh, big wide hallways, beautiful mantles, Italian marble adorned with beautiful bronze statuettes. Um, just really a fancy, fancy place. Um, let's see. There's a lot written on it here. Mostly starting in 1875, 1876. Um, gosh, many, many people were in and out of it. Was just just one of the most famous places there was around. This was Virginia City's Overflow Morgue used to store the bodies of the many who died during the winter when the ground was too frozen to dig the graves. The crypt was a temporary rest and peace place until the ground thawed in the spring and the bodies could be officially buried in the cemetery. Thank you, Toby. Enter if you dare. <laughs> The Washu Club opened its quarters for business on June 1st of 1875, and according to reports from the press at the time, application for membership came in rapidly, but little did anyone realize that the club was already at its height. 
Within less than five months, the palatial rooms were consumed by the flames that destroyed much of Virginia City on October 26th of 1875, and many of the members fell behind in paying their assessments on their membership, membership stock. Originally, that raised over $9,000 for the refurbishment of that building. Faced with the need to find a new home for the club and the delinquency of assessment officers of the Washoe Club ordered on December 10, 1875 that all delinquent shares be offered at public sale on February 10th of 1876 on the site of the club rooms on B Street. Among the delinquent members were those prominent men in Nevada history, Rollin M. Daggett, editor of the Enterprise, Attorney Charles DeLong, Dennis Driscoll, publisher of the Enterprise, U.S. Senator John P. Jones, J.H. Kinkhead, who later became governor of Nevada, U.S. Senator William M. Stewart, and Henry M. Yearington, Virginia and Truckee Railroad magnate. The new year... 1876 promised to be a prosperous one for the disarrayed club. A meeting was held in early March, which saw the election of new trustees and adoption of a res resolution to sell the club's lot on B Street and rent rooms elsewhere, rather than constructing a new building following that disastrous fire. The resolution noted this was to be done as soon as practical. After six months had passed before the new club room would be ready for occupancy, the Territorial Enterprise of September 3, 1876 said that the new quarters are more elegant than those that were on B Street. And it goes to describe the members, whatnot, the size of the rooms and all that, which were huge. Um, there's so much that was going on after that, the rebuilding. Um, contract artists called for four pictures each to be 36 by 56 inches in the clear they are to represent virginia city from end to end and are to be so faithfully executed that every place can be pointed out and recognized it was a beautiful was, place was that one of your that was, it, okay okay i was like I swear, I just heard a lady talking. <laughs> oh, you did? No, I, I thought, well, that was out from your camera? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you trying to make it spooky? <laughs> huh, what you say? Are you trying to make it spooky? <laughs> a little bit, no. <laughs> All right, you guys. So it sounds like some of you might have met my good friend, Willie Nelson. <laughs> uh, Willie Nelson and his other friends will actually be, blah, 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 be posted around the building to give you guys a little bit of a spook. So hopefully they do their job right. I apologize in advance, but they do. <laughs> um, but you guys, do you all see this huge box right over here? Yeah. Uh, so this is actually our old horse casket. Uh, this is where we stole store our, all of our old horse skeletons from all of these stagecoach days. So, <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. That is just a spiral staircase, y'all. Not nearly as exciting. <laughs> but wouldn't it be cool if you like cornered somewhere and heard nay or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but y'all, in this room, uh, 2009 Ghost Adventures was here for their very second time. And uh, Zach and Aaron, two of the investigators, came in here to set everything up for investigating. And like I said, there was only two of them in here, so it was a little bit odd, y'all. When a third shadow figure popped up on the wall, Right here, right behind you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, no, I'm not here. Uh, but you guys, these are huge guys. They are very seasoned of paranormal investigators. And they started screaming and crying, jumping around, and ran right out of here. It was hilarious to watch. Even I wouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> and you guys, to this day, we still do not know who that third shadow figure is. So hopefully... He does not follow you guys home. Maybe <laughs> But you guys, we are going to head on over to our crib to go take a quick peek over. Please stick with me, stay single file, and write the following right away. <laughs> Please stick together, you guys. Go ahead and lie 
might have been so awkward. <laughs> so I might have been so awkward. Behind us against the wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Glad I got you all the <laughs> <laughs> uh, If you guys actually take a look at the ground, you can see some of that old 80s linoleum that has dripped down. Mm -hmm. Fun poisonous pattern. Yes. Uh, and y'all, uh, if you could just come take a quick peek on over into my torture chamber and I'll tell you all about it. And this was right over here. Yeah, I know. But we are going to do this. This is the first time we've seen it from the top. Oh, oh, yeah. Like Oh, down into that room? Yes. Of what appeared to be a basically 
lady in 1800s wears standing right where you are, honey. <laughs> <laughs> that marriage to Matt. Uh, but you guys, basically, this absolutely creeped everyone out because of the fact that nobody was upstairs. Kaylin was literally the only one with keys to the upstairs building that day. Um, and with the tour guys, there during the daytime, there is literally only one way in and one way out. And that is with the keys that we have as tour guides. So there is no possible way that anybody could have been up here. As well as it is behind glass, which makes it nearly impossible to Photoshop. As well as it is, it's literally smack in the middle of the day. So, kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but you guys, we are going to head on into our ballroom and go check out our little girl go scratch in. So, Beverly 
fun times. You'll hear a rattle in the background once in a while. Well, you guys, come on in here to the phone room. Please watch your step right here if you do not need any more to be happy. It's been five months in front of it. Then you look at that painting, and then the ghost comes out. John Mackey, our famous Silver Strike King, uh, he discovered the largest Silver Strike in 1859. You'll see his name all over town. Uh, we also had Mark Twain, Thomas Edison, uh, and Ulysses S. Grant, the President and General during the Civil War. They all came and sat at this very exact table you guys are seeing right now. We had this authenticated fairly recently. What are what is going on? I'm hearing so many noises. Um, anyways, you guys, um, what they would do is just place a green felt table right over the or green felt tablecloth right over the table and play their poker game that way. And you guys, these were men, and also very rich men back in that day, so they very much loved the ladies of the night. And what they would do actually is have these ladies sneak off a of beach street right up there, walk down the staircase, <laughs> up this side door, or up to the side door, and walk right in here and give the men a little bit of good luck and entertainment for their nightly poker game. Fun times. <laughs> and that is why I said what I said. <laughs> but you guys, uh, we are going to head up to the third floor. I do apologize. There's a little bit of construction going on right now. So there's a tiny bit of a mess still. Uh, but if everyone could please hold on to the railings as you head up the stairs. We have had people pushed off in recent days. Pushed off. What? Oh, the <laughs> Of the building up here. 
here. I apologize, you guys. I have had a hair stuck in my eye for like four hours now. It will not come out no matter what I do. So it kind of like starts acting up every once in a while. I'm sorry, my eye just like starts tweaking. But you guys, we are going to head on over and go meet our 162 year old haunted doll, Betty. Um, if you guys could all say hello to Betty after we head on over, that would be <laughs> All right, this way, guys. No, I'm not going to be a Happen, including me. He loves to pick on me for some reason. And 
and we have a lovely relationship. Um, but he actually scratched me uh, two days ago in there on my last tour. So hopefully does not have anything, nothing happens, excuse me. Um, but I do need to tell you guys, if you choose to go in that room, I need you guys to stay completely respectful and serious when you go in there. Don't try to provoke it or summon anything. Um, as well as, like, even if you don't believe in it, just out of respect for me, please do it. Um, as well as, this is the point in the tour that it is crucial to stick together. So, especially coming out of that room. So please, nobody linger in that room is all I'm asking. <laughs> Did you just hear a goat? That was you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he has scratched, or he has hair pulled, he likes to mimic the voices of the people that you love, um, and he has also uh, made a 14 year old boy run right out of this room into that room in blood vomit. Um, so, and he had nothing medically wrong with him. So, pretty crazy stuff. He also loves to slam this door so much that it has begun to peel on the bottom right over here. As well as there was a number 12 in this vacant spot right over here, but he flung it down onto the ground one day when he was angry. We put it on that windowsill right over there. Um, but as you can see, it is gone because of the fact that somebody stole it. And like I said, don't steal anything from here, you guys. We had an oil painting stolen from us a few months ago. And a few weeks ago, it was FedEx back to us overnight with a letter saying that they had the worst luck in history. And that they hope karma can forgive them. Don't steal it, you guys. <laughs> um, but you guys, I am going to show you this very quickly. We have caught a picture of this guy. He's known as the Keeper of Souls, and he has been described as very tall, dark red skin, yellow beady eyes, and long, uh, stretched out face, and long, clawed, webbed hands uh, that he loves to scratch people with. Um, and uh, if you would like to see the picture that we have caught of him, we have caught him in that window. That is yeah. why I was saying keep in mind about the three story drop down and the closed offness. Um, but you guys, if you would like to not see the photo, please just inform me. But I'm going to show you super fast. As soon as I show you, please uh, exit on out and head towards the staircase and wait for me there. I'd really appreciate it. But here is he is, the top of the head, bottom of the chin, it's pointed, huge gaping mouth, uh, two beady yellow eyes, and clawed web. Hand. Very creepy. You guys, uh, top of the head, pointed chin right here, gaping mouth, two beady yellow eyes, and long claw web hand. Right here, we love it so much. Uh, it was built in the 1875 name named Francois Roche. I love that name. I want to name it next to that. But you guys, uh, this has been featured on Ripley's Believe It or Not, Believe It or Not. Um, and for the reason being that it actually was built completely freestanding using only glue and wooden dowels. No nails, no screws, no nothing. So do not step on it and we'll come right down. Uh, but you guys, this is where we have seen Lena walking up and down a ton. And if you guys stick to the red carpet and file on in there, I will show you some pictures of her. Like I said, please stick to the red carpet, you guys. Come on, you guys. Come on, in. And now if you want me, take a good look to your right and you will see Lena's mist right here. You can see the obvious blue twinge to it. And 
and she's either coming together or dissipating right here. We're not too sure which, but that's uh, and then if you look right up here, this is uh, the back side of Lena. Uh, she's walking up the staircase, and you can see the top of her head right here, and then each individual e individual strand. Sorry, Lola. Uh, <laughs> uh, pretty crazy right there. And then it files on down into her beautiful blue dress, and you can see her little foot right here. She's picking it up to put it on to the next step. You can even see all five toes. Pretty crazy. I highly recommend taking a look at that one again in a second. But if you guys walk right over here, we're going to head on into the crib. But before that, I want you to take a peek at my good friend, Stiffy. Yeah. <laughs> this is Stiffy, the mummified cat. He was shot and put into the walls during the 1800s because they believed during that day that it would ward off evil spirits. But at this point, we really just could use some moisturizer. So. And come on in here, you guys. We're going to head on to the car. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 